Uh, Two terabyte SSD though. That that. Yeah, that is a good. That's a good chunk, right? Yeah. So, that's most of that money right the, there. You can buy a digital Series X this fall for five hundred with a two terabyte drive yeah. though. So. Not not that I'm like comparing the two consoles or anything. You know, it's funny. I read on Twitter Maybe. someone was arguing that the whole reason Sony uh, priced this at seven hundred dollars is Xbox's fault because they're not good competition for Sony, and so Sony can do whatever they want. It's like really that this is you make this, this about is, Xbox. This is this wow. is where I insert my favorite meme, the Sure Jan meme. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it's my favorite yeah. meme. I love it. Uh speaking of love, let's uh move on to our final thing here and talk about some indie games. Um, this is our boss rush banter of the week from David Lasby. Uh indie ga- indie developers are critically important to the gaming industry. Um, so we've talked a lot about layoffs at these major AAA studios, right? Rocksteady just had a whole slew of layoffs. A lot of studios have closed recently. You know, Bungie has lost a ton of people. There's just so many who go down the list, right? There's probably 12,000 people who have been laid off this year. Um, but I think the rise of indie games is kind of filling that hole in which these triple a games yeah. maybe aren't hitting ha ah, holes mm-hmm. uh your favorite word yeah so i just um i want to know how you feel the indie like how the indie games are filling the gaps right and uh stephanie i'm gonna go your way first since you are queen of the indies um <laughs> did you mean to say gaps though, or did you meant to say a different word? I think no, you meant gaps. to say holes. Gaps. <laughs> yeah. Holes. <laughs> Stephanie, um, tell me how the indies are filling your holes. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. They fill every sad. single one. Um, <laughs> because it's just a variety. <laughs> Um, oh, that's getting something. clipped out somewhere. No. <laughs> anyway, oh. um, I am so grateful to discover indie games. I discovered them a little bit late uh, because I do feel like your average quote unquote gamer or casual gamer wouldn't regularly hear about indies, although it's it's getting better, especially with the Switch. The Switch has kind of become an indie machine, especially in the beginning I think like around 2017, 2018, you know, when Hades, you know, went on there and, and a bunch of other examples. Um, Don't forget Shovel Knight Indies, Spectre of Torment. Yes. Um, that was a good one. Indies is where developers, for the most part, have that creative license to think outside the box. Where, sure, they're ma- trying to make a living, but the bottom line isn't the priority you know so i feel like a lot of triple a titles kind of get lost into making a profit and trying to hit um you know cast a wide net and get as many players as possible whereas with indies you know you're getting a little bit you know experimental right with gameplay styles revisiting certain graphics um for example at pax i I tried out Feltopia, which is still very early, um, and Unleaving. Those are art medium based, like Unleavings made out of paintings. Um, Feltopia is actually made out of, like, I don't know how you want to describe it, Pat. You were there. It's felt mm-hmm. like it's. Physical. It was great. Like, we saw that making of video and just like all the handwork that. It went to like fluff the felt and to make it like moving and like a stop motion picture. It it was gorgeous. Exactly. So I, I could ramble on forever on what indies contribute to the video game industry. But what I also hope is that there's strength in numbers, right? There, you know, well, you see a lot of indies at PAX. Um, you see indies starting to make you know, make a dent in like the video game awards has its own, its own category. Um, 
I want in the indie scene in gaming to, in a sense, collectively provide quote unquote competition for the AAA games and provide a, a balance, so to speak. Uh, but I guess I'll just stop there and kind of invite others to chime in. Yeah, I will. I will definitely say the indies are very much needed in our world today. I, with your AAA development cycles now taking anywhere from five to eight years to make a game, these indie games are being produced. You know, because there's so many smaller companies, we're getting we're getting those like voids between AAA titles like filled, and also like just some of the quality that I see in these indie titles in terms of their storytelling, they probably rival, if not more indie games tend to have better stories than actual like AAA developed games. Like I think I probably like teared up more on the stories from the indie games that I've played more than I have from say like the last of us or like other big titles yeah, like space for the unbound right exactly like and... i still can't find a story that's almost damn near perfect as the space for the unbound was yeah and i gotta say it also proves that you don't need to have a multi-million dollar budget to produce a quality game i really hope mm -hmm. those are lessons that the the juggernauts can take mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean even not just in like you, you're talking about budgets and stuff i mean look at hell divers that game had a budget of like 40 million dollars it wasn't like a this one of these 100 million 200 million dollar games and it was a huge success or like you look at something like stardew valley i mean that guy made that game in his basement over the course of like five what four or five years and now he's like a millionaire right like because that game was so successful and um I mean, that game that game was done in free time. That game had z literally zero budget mm. except for time. Right. Yeah. And, mm. um, you know, you, it, it, but then but then you look at games like the the Hoyoverse games, which they spend hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars a year just to keep those games going, which granted, they make that money back in mm -hmm. tenfold. Right. But like mm -hmm. it's, you know, the the ongoing games and stuff like that are expensive and you just need a break from these, you know, these huge quadruple A games. Right. And like, don't get me wrong. I love, I love destiny. I love gears of war. I love uncharted. I love tomb Raider. I love these experiences. They're awesome. I love the blockbuster stuff, but like over the course of the last five years or so, I've really learned how to appreciate the smaller independent titles. And, um, they have they have started to mean more to me than these you know giant corporation funded shareholder expectation games because they're all kind of beginning to become the same i mean look at mm -hmm. as excited as i am for star wars outlaws to play that and for assassin's creed shadows like i know what i'm getting you know star wars is like an open world shooty shooty bang bang star wars game right or Assassin's Creed is, oh, we're in Japan this time instead of Rome or Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I, I know what I'm getting into. So um, the indie space really allows for experimentation and a lot of them turn out really cool. And, you, and then you can see where their inspiration comes from. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I know I brought up Shovel Knight quite a bit on this show, but like they are that is their Mario. Like you can very clearly see that like the inspirations from Mega Man and DuckTales and stuff like that. And mm. with their new game, Mina the Hollower, you can clearly see, well, there's definitely Castlevania and Zelda inspirations here. But that's all self-funded. That's all kickstarted. No investor, right? Like they, they want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And I applaud them for that because they are big enough to, you know, go seek yeah. a publisher to make their next game. And you know, yeah, Yacht Club they're is... making the game that they want to do. They're not yeah. making a game mm -hmm. that someone tells them what to yeah. do. Yeah, I think that's a big difference. I'd say I haven't played, I've only played two indie games. 
<laughs> so I'm not like well versed in them, but my very first indie game ever was Hollow Knight. And then my second one was Hades. Um, and I like them because similar to like what Corey was saying to me, they offer something I don't get with any other game, like the AAA games of plat- like or popular games out there, you know, like to me, there's nothing like Hades out there, nothing that can compare to Hollow Knight to me. And so for me, they filled like a special space for me. And I've been interested in trying more indies. I just didn't have time because I was busy in college for the past few years and other stuff going on. But I have like a list of indies I've been interested in getting into. But it's like, despite how many games I've played in my life, like for me, Hollow Knight and Hades would be top 10 for sure. Like those are two of my favorite games I've ever played ever. Um, I was like obsessed with them. I love the story. I think that's something... um, you mentioned Patrick, how they make you feel emotional, like the indie mm-hmm. games you've played, and I think that's a big deal to me. Is like, you know, I feel like they do a good job storytelling. Like I thought Hades storytelling was really good. Hollow Knights was fantastic. Like I was a, so in love with piecing the story together for that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I think I think they're amazing, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I can make time to play more indie games in the future to experience more stories and whatnot. Well, you know, um, one last thing I wanted to add um, that maybe isn't as common, but I appreciate my first question, though, will be to you, Corey. Um, Hellblade, the first, well, the it was that Ninja mm-hmm. Theory, right? Are they technically considered yep. indie? So yeah, uh, the other aspect yeah, first one is, yeah. is the social justice, so to speak, that indies tend to have, ranging from a Corgi's Cozy Hike, like our friends at Scalisco, indie two indie devs they donate a portion of any of their profits to you know getting dog like taking care of dogs and shelters okay there was another type of indie game that had to do with animals it was on an indie world showcase so i apologize i don't recall the name but a part of the proceeds go towards animals and shelters and then you've got Ninja Theory with Hellblade, which paid very special attention to mental health and mental illness. So there are things, again, that's beyond making a profit where they're actually contributing to society, whether it's to help our furry friends or to shine light on mental health and going, hey, you're not alone. You know, Mm -hmm. there are these things that that. I think provides true value to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, remember when we talked to the people in Psychroma or the developers of Psychroma and mm-hmm. how like they purposely went with like gender fluid characters because, yeah. you know, it helped them like explain about how their perception of being what they uh, consider themselves to be is scary. Um and or at least to the outside world comes off as scary and it's a way that they were describing the fear of like their identity in Mm -hmm. almost like this this uh psychological horror game that they created yeah like yeah these are stories that you can't really tell anywhere else but a medium and it's the indie developers that want to tell this story because it's personal to them they know they may or may not make them the most money but it's what they want to tell. Yeah. And uh, going back to Hellblade for a minute, like that was that that series is for me is like one of the most impactful series for me. You know, when I played through it, I I guess it would have been the second time I played through the first game. Um, that's when I really started to take men- my own personal mental health seriously. Um, and then I s- kind of went and searched for some resources to try to figure out how to help myself. Uh, most of them came from our friends from Guardians Mental Health, uh, which is the mental health organization that uh, kind of started around Destiny, uh, but now kind of does a lot of other things. Obviously, they've grown a lot since then. Um, we actually did a spotlight with Joe Telesk, uh, their executive director, and he's just an awesome guy. Uh, I really missed him at PAX West this year, but uh, we'll see him next at East. So um, mm-hmm. it's uh, Hellblade, you know, was kind of one of those experiences where you can tell a really impactful story without, you know, like everybody's like, 
I know The Last of Us is like a beloved game and stuff like that, right? Like The Walking Dead and all these things. But like everybody's like the story's so good or Game of Thrones. But like I feel like Hellblade told an impactful story without being so brutally gruesome about things. Granted, there's a lot of violence in that game, right? I'm not trying to take away from that. But like this, the way the story was being told was not through the violence. It was, you know, very impactful for me that way and i think that's kind of when i started really really appreciating stuff like these smaller titles um is through it was more a game symbolic like it wasn't mm-hmm. gratuitous violence yeah yeah so um taylor you have any uh indies that you kind of beyond ho- the hollow knight because mm-hmm. i know you yeah. talked about hollow knight and uh, yeah you mean that I've like any, played? Any no, just like anything that's like super impactful for you. Besides besides Hollow Knight and stuff oh, like that. Indie or... related. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. If we're talking about endings, like I said, I've only played two of them. So it's hard for me to say if they like impacted me. <laughs> um to me they were just like really good games and really good storytelling. Um, but in terms of like impacting me emotionally and stuff i would say no just because for me hollow knight's story isn't like something that's like personal Mm. same with like hades they just had good stories in the game um but i do know like there's other indie games out there that you guys have talked about um like some of my friends are obsessed with indie games and they've talked about you know some that you said address like mental health issues or like um i think isn't spearfarer an indie game i think Mm -hmm. yeah um one of my friends was talking Yes, and he was that one. He said made him cry a lot, and I mm-hmm. I don't know too much of the premise. I'm assuming it's, you know people passing on or something like that, or learning to let go. I'm assuming that's what it is. I don't know much about the game, but he said it was like really good, um, and it was very emotional and whatnot. So he recommended it. So that's on my list to play. Um, so yeah, because I'm I'm looking forward to playing more because I I've heard that the storytelling um, topics they address and stuff like that are just really impactful. Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you, space for the unbound. Any chance I get to sell this game, I will. It's fantastic. The story is so impactful. It deals with depression. It deals with bullying. It deals with suicide. Like, And it does a, such a good job in telling its story. Yeah. So it's, uh, what's it called, you said? A Space for the Unbound. Okay. I'll add it to my list. <laughs> yeah. And this game like made me cry. Like there's some games get me like misty eyed and get me feels. This game actually made me cry. Like mm. ugly cry. So That's probably I'll probably cry. I'm very emotional. I cry at a lot of games so. <laughs> <laughs> or movies. So I'm sure I'll be the same way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh well. I think that's going to wrap that topic. Um, we did have one question, but I think we're going to hold it uh, until next week because of a time and B. I think we need a little bit more time to process this PlayStation five pro information. Um, it's kind of, you know, about what we think the next switch will be compared to this. So, uh, mm. but we'll, we'll get your question next time, Shane promise. Uh but we're going to we're going to wrap it there. Um, Taylor, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, really appreciate you hanging hanging around for this this long kind of trek through <laughs> video games. Uh, where can people find you and if you want them to follow you? If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Deary, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.